I'm Joe from Cheap Joe's Art Stuff, and today I'd like to talk to you about traditional and non-traditional watercolor. I've been an artist for about 25 years, or have tried to be an artist for about 25 years, and have enjoyed it very, very much. During that time, basically, I've worked with watercolor. Of course, I've worked with oil and acrylic and pastel and everything so I could talk about it, being in the business of selling art material. But it's so exciting to think that you have a medium that is so versatile as watercolor, and most people don't realize how versatile it is. I don't think I did until very recently. I took a workshop with my friend Skip Lawrence and um, watched his process of using watercolor almost like oil or acrylic, and it just opened up a whole new world for me. In traditional watercolor, we have all kinds of um, fear about it, that we can't correct it, uh, that it has to be totally transparent, we can't use white paint, we can't use black paint, all of these things. And the truth is, what I want to do is to do a better painting, not to be some sort of uh, strict uh, watercolors. Now, I love transparent watercolor, I uh, love uh, the American Watercolor, the Transparent Watercolor Society, all of those, but th th we're going to show you two different ways to approach this today. I've outlined my drawing a little heavy here, much heavier than I would traditionally do, so that you can see it a little better on the paper. This is 300 pound Kilimanjaro paper. I've also used the artist tape to tape off the border here because either you need a mat or you need to tape it because half the fun is taking the tape off. You'll see what I mean when we get to that point. This is artist tape. It's uh, my favorite tape because it doesn't tear the paper, but I'm very cautious. And so when I want to do this, even this big piece right here, I'll tear it off and literally put it on my clothes like that. I'll take it off of there and then, only then, do I put it on the paper. And when I put it on, I mash it down like this with my fingers, very good, around the inside edge so that the watercolor doesn't creep up in there. And once that's done, I'm ready to do my painting. And like we say, this is a traditional watercolor used in the traditional method. This is a golden fleece brush. It's a nylon. It's, this is a one and a half inch. I have a two inch brush. And I generally always start off with the largest brushes that I have. And I use those brushes till I just can't stand it anymore. So that helps me get down big layers of color and that's exactly what I'm trying to do in here. So with traditional watercolor, I could come in here and add just a little color to my water here, just so I can see where I've put it. This is cobalt blue added into it. So I'll simply start off in here by this, adding this little wash of cobalt blue, but it's not really gonna be blue, but I'm gonna do that so I can see where I've wet it. So I come in quickly with this, and if I overlap, it doesn't matter. I have plenty of room for error in here, and keep on coming in here like this. The only thing I'm thinking about before, actually thought about before I started this, is is this going to be a warm or a cool painting? And if it's going to be a warm painting, then I'm going to keep about 80% of it warm, and some 20% of it cool. So I have a basis down now and then here in this bottle, this is, oh, this is transparent watercolor. This is a prescription bottle that I'm painting around and the reason it's in there is I was a pharmacist before I took up art. Actually when I took up art, I was a pharmacist and so I've incorporated art and pharmacy in here. This is kind of an abstract shape that I'm working on because it was, it was kind of easy to tell you the truth to this shape is to work with. Now I'll come in here and I'll put in some bristles for my, my brush. This particular brush is a skipper and that's this brush with this nice big silver ferrule that I think is so, so pretty and we use that in the next but in this one, we're going to use this golden fleece wash brush, and there's the bristles on that. Up here in the handle, you have this beautiful dark 
red, brownish red handle, and I'll put that in, and it'll run out in there a little bit. You can see that's okay. That doesn't hurt anything. Let's bring, let's make that red part a little bit heavier down here. That would work a little bit better on that. And now we have got some running coming in here. That's a good thing. Up here we've got some. That's going to help it blend in there and give us something that we didn't expect. So that will work really nice. I'm going to add some, a little bit of uh, very light silver to this to make that ferrule in there. So just like that, there's the ferrule in there. And then we're going to be building this up all along now as we move. And so I'll come in here with this. This is the background in here from this. And it probably won't stay this color because watercolor, we can come back in. We can always go darker over light. That much easier than we can lighten an area. I want to have some darker stuff right in here. This is a painting in among the watercolor, and I mean the art and the pharmacy stuff. And so I'll pick up a little, start adding a little darker color down in here, maybe some brighter color, some of this yellow and um, burnt sienna and put it right down in here. I don't know what that is. It's a little foreground of something. And then I'm cutting around this tube of paint right here. And then we're going to take it on up there just like that. There we go, just like that. That's going to be repeated right over here. That same color, same shape and everything. And we're going to bring it up in here maybe about right there down there like that and that's it for that right for that for right now this is the bottle up here are some prescription things down here let's add some of this beautiful beautiful quinacridone gold I just love this color and I'll mix up enough to, to, to get most of this done in here See, I can come right over that tape don't worry about it Isn't that a pretty color? I just love that color. I didn't mix up. It's awfully hard to mix up enough if you're doing big washes like this. And uh, generally, I don't mix enough. So I try to, to make an excess of it. And when I don't have enough, it's, it's much easier to make too much, have some left over than to have to come back and activate it like I'm doing in here. But I think that's a really pretty color. Let's add some of that color right up in here. Nice. Wow. I'm going to add some ultramarine to it, and it's going to make a rich, dark green, kind of an, kind of an evergreen sort of color. Do the same thing over in here, add a little bit of darker stuff to it, maybe up in here. Come on up, it can come around this brush right here and help sort of give us a definition. I'm going to put it right behind that bottle and then I'm going to soften that edge in there with just a soft brush, just like that. There we go. Now then, we've got color on a lot of it. This is the prescription label. This is the tube of paint. Back here is a prescription bottle. So I'm going to go now to the one and a half inch bold wash brush. And I'm going to make that, that uh, bottle right there kind of a warm color. And uh, it's going to be this sort of orangey color right here, which is Halloween orange that I'm mixing with the lemon yellow, make it a little more orange. And I'm going to do this one right here that way. Oh, that looks like the quinacridone gold, doesn't it? So we've actually mixed up some there. I'm going to add uh, some red to it, still keeping it warm. And this is going to be 
that bottle right there is going to be red and it'll be golden red and we're going to have a label that's going to be right there right there's the label for that one leave that little white edge there then these are prescription bottles we're going to make those this periwinkle color and it's going to be like that it's going to be a nice gray we have to have some gray in here to work against these and we'll put the top right here the lid of that one can be that gray this one we don't want white so we'll make that one gray we'll leave this one white for the time being let's add a little this is a really pretty color look at this this is a sort of a silver color and we'll put some in there and right here maybe up to there that gives us a little bit of that light in there there's that I'm gonna add some more I love that color that's uh, periwinkle and Halloween orange and it makes a beautiful gray and I just happened on it just now by accident so I'm going to use some of it right up in here oh that's beautiful mm -hmm, I like that I'm going to bring that down a little more so that that white line through there is smaller it's too much across from here so I'm going to change it to right there pick up some more of it maybe warm it just a little bit and then I'm going to soften these edges up here and we'll come right on around these we're just doing negative painting now around these bottles and things and right there so you can see how the color has changed now from being cool to being a warm color. Let's leave some of that blue in there. That's really pretty neat. Ooh, I like that. There we go. We'll leave that and make it look like a lid on that one. This is so much fun. And even if I goof up, I'm going to change this now. I had that white coming into here. I'm going to have it over here, so I'm going to change it to right up there. So this is going to become darker right there. And there's going to be a little bit of a, a light streak right there that I may have to lift out. Here's the label for this bottle. And it is, it's an old bottle, so it wouldn't be white like that. It's going to be kind of rusty. And we'll soften this edge in here and leave that like that. This bottle has got to have some more value to it. And so I'm going to, down at the bottom here, I'm going to actually cool it off a little bit. There we go. And then up here at the top, it would be darker under that. And perhaps the light is coming this way. So we'd have that darker, and we have a little thumb in there. We have this darker coming down here wonder what's causing that in there it's the liquid in the jar so this is traditional watercolor lots of water a little bit of color nothing too heavy and uh, perhaps we would keep working with it for a little while longer but I think you will see the idea that this is transparent watercolor let's change that right there Pull that down to there. We'll add a little more value in this jar right here. I lost that lid, so I'm going to try to get it back in there. I lost that right there. Here's this prescription bottle that we didn't get in. There's that one. No lid on that. That's running over there. And that's the idea of the transparent water. Oh, I've still got to do this one down here. Look at this. I'm about to forget my tube of paint. So we'll leave the white there on that lid. We have that silver there. That's the metal end of the tube. And this is the metal part of the tube there. And then we'll pick up a little bit of this. Uh, let's pick up a little violet color. This is royal amethyst, a really pretty color. 
and we'll have that as part of the color of the tube in here like that come around there like that and then with a little smaller brush by the way these are this is um, an American journey brush it's the nylon it's one I just love these brushes they're so tough and yet so sensitive they work great American journey interlock nylon the flats that I'm using right now and I want a little shadow right here under this tube so I can come in there like that with it there we go and we're going to put some bright red right here in the center of this thing and that tube of paint is about done now there we go we got to get some bright red right up here too in this brush handle this this thing kind of got lost I'm adding some almost pure color just a little bit of and then we've been using red paint so we'll put some of that in there we've been using some gamboge painting with gamboge so we put a little of that in there we'll add a little darker color right down here at the end of the bristles And that's, and, and then, oh, we have the bottle here with the label on it. Have to know what's in this jug right here. It's something very important. And that becomes our painting with transparent watercolor. If I wanted to lift out some color now, I would come back with either a thirsty brush or with a, a sponge and actually lift out some color. And uh, right here is a great way to do it because this got kind of lost over here. So I just take a brush, stick it in the water, clean it good, dry it off, and it becomes a thirsty brush. So instead of putting down color, it actually lifts color. And so you can see how that got lighter there. There we go. Let's lighten this on the top just a little. A little highlight right there. A little highlight right there. Oh, I like that, that's fun. Now then, this is a this is needs a little more color down in here for a variety. So I'm going to add some of this red that I've already mixed up. It's really pretty. And I'm going to come in here with some of it. I don't know what that is. And it really doesn't matter. So it's an abstract painting. We've already talked about that. And it's not near as abstract as most people think of abstract, but for me it's pretty abstract. I'm not uh, a really very good abstract artist. Now while that's in there, I'm going to soften that edge a little bit. I don't like that that hard. So with just water, I'll come in and just soften that a little bit. There we go. Now then, I'm going to take a a stick believe it or not and this is a little stick that I gathered out of the woods and took the bark off of and I sharpened it with my knife you can see it there I think and it's great for scratching into where it's still wet so I have a little oh that's look at this I have some hair on my brush there now down here I'm gonna have a prescription and most people can't read prescriptions, and they can't read that. Now, Rx means prescription, and there I have it, the doctor's name down here. And then I can sign my name on it also at the same time while it's wet, and it will show up. So I can make it part of the prescription. Uh, I can sign my name very small right in there. People would have to look for it. Or I can come back with a rigor and darken it a little bit, and that would be one way to do it. So that's the traditional watercolor. Look what happens when we take the tape off, which I told you is almost as much fun as painting it. That's the one piece of tape that I put over the other piece of tape to show you how to put it on, to be sure and put it on your clothes before you put it on the paper. And be careful tearing it off anyhow because it will sometimes still tear the paper. We don't want to do that. 
So generally speaking, with three, most 300 pound paper, you can use tape on, they're pretty tough, without fear of damaging it. So that gives us the little border around our painting. And there's the traditional watercolor done in the traditional method with a lot of water and, and not too much color, no, no really rich color. So next we're going to do the non-traditional watercolor.